There are major ruptures within the India alliance. Mamta Banerjee has now officially said that the TMC is going to contest on its own in Bengal. So has Punjab Chief Minister Bhagwant Maan, who has said that the Ahmadmi Party will contest individually in Punjab. Now that raises a fundamental question. If the India alliance is already breaking up, it's already splintering, even, it, even before it goes to the people, then what chance does it stand? And if the TMC in Bengal and the Ahmadmi Party in Punjab is not interested in an alliance in the Congress Party, then what relevance does this alliance have? But the most important, and perhaps this is the most moot question, are individual members in the India Alliance, whether it's the TMC in this case or the Ahmadmi Party, do they feel like they stand a better chance in Lok Sabha 2024 going it alone rather than ally with the Congress, which they see as a liability? But first, the story so far. राहुल जी ने स्पष्ट उत्तर दिया टीएमसी और ममता जी विशेष रूप से क्योंकि वो एक बड़े नेता हैं ममता जी के बिना इंडिया गठबंधन की कल्पना नहीं कर सकता दो हजार चौबीस में लोकसभा चुनाव में आम आदमी पार्टी के पक्ष में तेरह जीरो All right, let's forget about the semantics. Let's forget about the polemics around this. But there is hard math. There is cold logic behind Mamta Banerjee's decision and of course what Bhagwan Man said about going it alone in Punjab. And this is where that confidence stems from. It's simple, cold arithmetic. Now, this is what the 2019 Lok Sabha election result looked like. In Bengal, the TMC of course won 22 out of 42 seats. The BJP won a staggering 18. And the Congress had two, the CPM uh, zero. This was the 2019 Lok Sabha election. Now, the bet that Mamta Banerjee and the TMC are making is that the Bengali voter will likely switch to what the position was in the 2021 assembly election. Remember, in the assembly election, the TMC swept. They got 215 out of 294 seats. If you were to convert those assembly constituencies into parliamentary numbers, 215 would translate to 32 out of 42 seats for the TMC and 10 for the BJP. Now, if you were to take the Lok Sabha election result of 2019, and if all three parties, that's Congress, Left and TMC, were to fight together, the India Alliance, they would have ended up with 34 seats and the BJP at 8. So the difference for Mamta Banerjee ditching the India Alliance is just a meager two seats. 34 seats if they fought together in 2019 and 32 seats if you were to convert the 2021 assembly election into parliamentary numbers. So in her calculation, in the TMC's calculation, the net net loss at max would be two seats. That is not too much of a cost to pay for taking on the BJP. That's not too much of a cost to pay for splintering the India alliance. Mamta Banerjee and the TMC would rather contest 42 out of 42 and hope that they win 32 out of that 42 than give eight or 10 seats. We don't know what the number was eventually. But whatever it is, it had to be somewhere in the ballpark of double digits to the Congress and the left and risk losing those seats than bank on the 32, which is the number that they're going by as per the 2021 assembly election results. Now, similarly, that was the case of Bengal. If you were to take the case of Punjab, it is even more so the case because if you go back to what happened in Punjab in 2019 in the Lok Sabha elections, the Congress had eight seats out of 13. The Aam Aadmi Party had only won. The BJP and the Akali Dal were in an alliance back then in 2019. So they won four out of the 13. 
So 8, 4 and 1 is how Lok Sabha 2019 panned as far as Punjab is concerned. But then 2021 happened and it was a massive sweep for the Ahmadmi Party and for Bhagwant Maan. They won 95 out of the 117 assembly constituencies. That would translate to 11 parliamentary seats, 11 seats in the Lok Sabha. Only two to the Congress and zero to the BJP and the Akali Dal. If they were to fight together, provided that they can come to an understanding on which seat which party fights from, they would only get 10 and the BJP and Akali Dal would have gotten three. So which means net net the loss is just one seat. In fact, the Ahmadmi Party's calculation is if they fight on their own and if they're able to repeat the performance from the 2022 assembly election, they stand to gain one seat more than what it would have been had they allied with the Congress. So it's cold, hard arithmetic that is on the back of this decision by both the Aam Aadmi Party in Punjab as well as, of course, Mamta Banerjee uh, in, uh, in, in Bengal. But the question is, arithmetic is one thing. Elections are more often than not decided basis chemistry. Would there be chemistry on the ground? As Mamta Banerjee said in a public rally a couple of days ago, for 34 years, she fought the left in the Congress. She can't just suddenly abandon all that history and join the left in the Congress just because the BJP is the bigger political rival right now. So arithmetic and chemistry, cold, hard logic behind the decision, not just some emotional decision that's been taken on the spur of the moment. Let's try and make sense of this because if the India alliance is not going to be an alliance in Bengal and Punjab, maybe even in Delhi, then what's, what chance does it stand? Sanju Varma is national spokesperson of the BJP. Dr. Shantanu Sen of the TMC, I was told, will be joining this show. We will see uh, if he's joining the show. So far, he's not been connected. Vivek Silas is the spokesperson of the Samajwadi Party. Sham Prasad Mekha is a political analyst. And Amitabh Tiwari, election strategist, joining us. Uh, let me start with Vivek Silas because, you know, what this means, Mr. Silas, is... In Bengal, Mamta Banerjee is saying, I'm better off contesting on my own. In Punjab, Bhagwant Maan and the Amadmi Party are saying that they're better off contesting on their own. You would imagine that the Samajwadi Party, which is the principal opposition party in Uttar Pradesh, would also be tempted to say the same thing after Punjab and after Bengal. First of all, very good evening to you, uh, Mr. Jacobs and the fellow panelists. Yeah, you just talked about arithmetic and chemistry. It's all about arithmetic and chemistry for all the political parties, not only the Samajwadi Party, the Congress, even for the BJP. It's all about arithmetic and chemistry. And it's a game of numbers. Finally, you have to get the numbers to uh, form the government because numbers are the most important. I, I can talk about Uttar Pradesh. In Uttar Pradesh, we have already uh, shared our seats with uh, RLD, that is uh, Mr. James Chaudhary's uh, you know, party, and we have given him seven seats in the western part of Uttar Pradesh. But uh, uh, three talks we have already had with the Congress party. Talks are going well. And I hope we have asked for the list uh, from the Congress party and we have asked them to hurry up because uh, the Samajwadi party has decided certain seats where we are going to fight. Okay. But we are asking for the seats from the Congress. See how, what is your plan? Uh, what are your candidates? How you are going to win? What will be your combination? I, I hope that they provide it as soon as possible and where the candidates will be out on the you know the battlefield as soon as possible. That is what we are hoping for. Okay. Let me ask Sanju Varma. Sanju Varma, what I also did not show in this graphic, and I, I can say this because our research team has dug this out, out of the 18 seats in Bengal, which the uh, BJP won in 2019, 10 of that 18 seats, if the Congress left and the Trinamool came together, they would have beaten the BJP. So the BJP would have been reduced to just 8 seats, and this India alliance would have gotten 34. That is the calculation. That is the cold, hard arithmetic. Like I said, every election is different. It may not necessarily translate as is. But that is what Mamta Banerjee is giving up because she believes she stands a better chance to take on the BJP if she fought on her own. And she's going by the 2021 assembly election result, which was 215 to the TMC and 77 to the BJP. Of course, from that 77, a substantial number has also now shifted uh, to back to the TMC. But, but the, 
moot point being that for Mamta Banerjee, this is cold arithmetic. This is cold election arithmetic. She doesn't st stand to gain as much from allying with the left and the Congress as they stand to gain by allying with the TMC. You know, Zaka, I've done a zillion debates on various channels, including with you, on the uh, pragmatism of this dot-dot uh, alliance coming together. I maintain, as I always have, this is a debilitated, fractious, and electorally vanquished alliance uh, bound together by only one glue, their visceral hatred for Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Mm -hmm. And, you know, while a cold arithmetic is all kosher, I myself say that, you know, a data speaks a large part of the story, if not everything. If you say that the BJP, uh, you know, might not do as well in 2024 as it did in Lok Sabha 2019, particularly with reference to Bengal, uh, because of uh, the fact that, you know, we did not do as well as we anticipated in 2021 though to my mind uh, from three or four seats to 77 is almost a 2500 percent jump which is phenomenal by any yardstick be that as it may if you give bjp uh, you know uh, not enough credit for the fact that it is unlikely to repeat its stellar performance of 18 lok sabha mps from bengal like we did in 2019 by virtue of your same arithmetic you also then have to say that the Congress will be wiped out from, uh, you know, Madhya Pradesh, not only in terms of seats, because in any case, it got just one seat from Chindwara uh, exactly. last time. Exactly. But even in terms of vote share, it will be wiped out, uh, given that, you know, despite a so-called 18-year-old anti-incumbency, at least a perceived one, uh, the Congress was not able to capitalize on that. And not only that, look at the phenomenal performance of BJP. I would have understood if we would have got 100, 150, 120, 130 seats. Getting 163 seats is mind-boggling in Madhya Pradesh. Again, look at Rajasthan. The Congress got zero seats. Uh, BJP got 24 seats out of 25, and that one lone seat uh, went to Hanuman Beniwal's party. And again, Chhattisgarh, despite not doing well in the uh, 2018 assembly elections, you will appreciate the fact that in 2014, we got 10 Lok Sabha seats from Chhattisgarh. In 2019, we got nine Lok Sabha seats. So my limited point is this. Point number one, it is very unfair to extrapolate a Lok Sabha result onto an assembly elections or okay. vice versa. Point number two, if you say that BJP may not have its act together in West Bengal, given cold hard arithmetic and the logic that you put out, by virtue of the same logic, BJP stands doubly empowered in the Hindi heartbeat. Because don't forget, ahead of Lok Sabha 2019, we had lost... Uh, Madhya Pradesh, we lost yeah. Rajasthan and we lost Chhattisgarh. Uh, we are coming back with a very, very strong I just, this I just, I just want to, you know, add the caveat that between 2018 assembly elections and Sanjeev Verma is 100% right, the BJP lost Madhya Pradesh, it lost Rajasthan, it lost Chhattisgarh. Between 2018 assembly elections and 2019 Lok Sabha, they made up ground so much so that in Madhya Pradesh, they won 28 out of 29, in Rajasthan, 24 out 24. of 25. And uh, of course, in Chhattisgarh, 10 out of 11. Hi. But I want, to, I want to speak to Dr. Shantanu Sen. And can we have that graphic again, please? The Bengal graphic. Because Mamta Banerjee today has made a cold, hard calculation based on numbers as to why it is better for her and for the TMC to go on their own. Uh, bases the numbers from the 2021 assembly election. Let me just play out those numbers before I go to Dr. Shantanu Sen. This is what the numbers say. Now, like, like Sanju Verma said, and she's 100% right, you know, you cannot compare assembly election to Lok Sabha election, but the calculation that Mamta Banerjee has made is 2019 Lok Sabha was an aberration. That TMC has got 22, BJP got 18, Congress got 2, and CPM uh, none in that 2019 Lok Sabha election. But the base that they are starting from is the 2021 assembly election where the TMC won 215 out of 294, the BJP won 77. If you were to convert that, if you were to convert the assembly constituencies into parliamentary segments, the TMC would have won 32, not 22, and the BJP would have won 10 and not 18. The problem in this math, uh, Dr. Shantanu Sen, is that a lot has happened between 2021 and 2024 and two that it's not an assembly election it is the election to elect the prime minister of this country so that math or that starting point as you believe would be 32 out of 42 and 10 out of 42 for the bjp may not hold 
Because again, if you were to go back to the 2016 assembly and convert that into Lok Sabha, the TMC would have won much more than the 22 seats that you won in 2019. That was not the case. Now, before I answer your question, I, would, I was uh, really enjoying and it was giving me immense pleasure when I was seeing the BJP spokesperson living in fool's paradise and daydreaming about coming for the third time in power. Now, regarding Prime Minister, yes, of course, this time 2024 is going to be an election to, to elect a Prime Minister of the country. Now, people of India, they really want a Prime Minister, not a publicity master. Of this course, they want a PM which should stand for Prime Minister, not publicity master. This man Our is learned Prime Minister being far away from the development. Stop engaging uh, this in man being far away from the development in 2014. In 2014, BJP faced the election with some false promises, which proved to be false later on. In 2019, as stated by their appointed, the then Governor of Jammu and Kashmir, Shattopal Malik, they faced Rana the election with some drama attacks. regarding Puloma and Balakot. And now in 2024, they are in a mood to play religion card to win over the election, which is not going to yield any result. Because their actual character has been unveiled. When the entire country is burning, when the India is ranking 111 in global anger index out of 121, no, no, kind of when there is skyrocketing of price of normal of the essential commodities, when India is facing for the highest the unemployment in 45 years, Dr. So Sen, people Dr. need Sen, a change. One second, the, the, the debate, the debate topic for tonight, one, one second, one at a time, please, please, Dr. Sen, the debate topic for tonight is why has Mamta Banerjee despite taking the initiative for the India Alliance, she's the one who came up with the name India Alliance, today decided that the TMC is going to fight on its own, it's going to fight unilaterally in Bengal. Then where is the India yeah, Alliance? The it's not like TMC is, very, is going to contest is, in Goa is, and Karnataka. They're, they're, the they're reason, primarily going to contest in Bengal. The reason is very, <coughs> the reason is very clear. Our, our Supremo has categorically said Congress should fight straight away in 300 seats against BJP. And in the other states where the religion, yes, re regional parties are competent enough, why are you interfering time and again, madam? My, my, uh, my appeal to the anchor, I ask her to keep, keep quiet. The moderator will moderate the debate. One at a time, please. One at a time. Let, let Dr. Sen finish. Uh, Sanjuji, I'll come back to you. Just, just, just give him 30 seconds. 30 seconds, please. Let, let Dr. Sen finish. I'll come back to you, Sanjuji. I, I will, I will keep my word. You know that. Yeah, uh, Dr. Sen, please. Let's stick to the point. Why has Mamta Banerjee decided to unilaterally snap the alliance? Please answer the that. The reason is very clear. The reason is the reason is very clear. It has been told categorically time and again that in states where the regional parties are competent enough to fight back BJP, and that has been proved in previous elections. In those particular states, those regional parties should be given free hand to fight. In our state of West Bengal, it is only and only Trinamool Congress which can fight back and defeat BJP, okay. which has been proved yeah, in several no, which, previous which, elections. Which, uh, you know, at that a very basic level, once again, level, why in our state of West Bengal, once again, once again, Trinamool at a very basic level, BJP, lol, lol. Then, then you should not call yourself <laughs> an alliance because an alliance is adjustments at state level between political parties. Clearly, in this case, Mamta Banerjee is saying, and, and to, to her credit, it's not just her, even the Punjab chief minister is saying, boss, I don't want to have anything to do with the Congress party. We're going to fight on our own. But Sanju Verma, please respond. I need to go to Sham Prasad Mehta as Thank well you. and Amitabh Tiwari right after that. So quick resp response, please. Yes, it will be a quick response. And unlike the TMC goon uh, who masquerades as a member of parliament, I will stick to the topic at hand and not digress. So let me tell the TMC, since you took an, uh, you know, ad hominem My strong objection me, to the word is being used by her. You are a TMC goon. My strong Bhai objection to the word being used by her. Bhai sahab, aap TMC goon ho. Aapko to certificate mil raha hai. Ma'am, ma'am, let's, let's please, let's please not be done. My strong objection against the word being used by her. Let's be above board. Let's be above all these personal attacks. Let's please, let's please, let's please stick to, yeah. But not personal attacks. To be fair, he did not personally attack you. Let me finish. Make the Thank make you. the point on merit, yeah. Yes. yes. She has I got she has got minimum gesture. Yeah, yeah, Dr. Sen, because, yes. You know, Please eat. Thank yeah. you. Hmm. Yes. Stop behaving like a goon and shut up. Now let me come in. Zaka, you know, I started the debate by giving out hard data. 
And what did this man say? The BJP is living in fool's paradise because they daydream that Modi will come back to power. So remember the date today. What is the date? It is 24th of January 2024. And I'm saying on Zaka Jacobs widely watched show, Tisri Bar Modi Sarkar, and you will have a nice big fat wobbly omelette on your face. You remember what you said in 2023 Tripura elections ke pehle? This time the BJP will be wiped out in Tripura. BJP got 32 seats in Tripura, you got zero seats. What did you say ahead of the Goa Assembly elections in 2022? BJP will be wiped out in Goa, the TMC will form a government in Goa. What did you get in Goa? You got zero seats Why in Goa. Why your party is running away from the issue of development? You zero presence outside Bengal. Why your party is running away you from the issue of development? You have zero presence outside Bengal. Okay, okay. I, think you, I think both of you have spoken enough. Let me please go across to Shama Prasad Mekha and also to Amitabh Tiwari. Shama Prasad Mekha, one second, let me go to Shama Prasad Mekha, please. Shama Prasad Mekha, the problem is, and it's very apparent to everyone, none of the regional parties want to have, you know, give too much space or too much credence to the Congress party. Now, of course, things could have been completely different had the Congress won in some of the winter elections, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh. Congress did not win. So, whether it is a TMC or an Amadmi party today, tomorrow it could be Samajwadi party, it could be JDU the day after, particularly in the Hindi heartland in the northern part of India, Regional parties feel, why should they cede space to the Congress? And that is the bigger challenge for the Congress because it is in this same heartland that in 180 seats, the Congress has to take on the BJP in a direct fight. And they are looking at the last two elections, 2019 and 2014. Congress barely made it to 15 or 20 seats out of those 180. The BJP swept those seats. That's why these regional parties are saying, why should we concede to the Congress? Today it's TMC and Amadmi Party. Tomorrow it could be JDU and Samajwadi Party. If they also say the same thing and if they also sing the same tune, then there is no India alliance. There is, I mean, it exists on paper. It does not exist on ground. Okay. Jaka, uh, good evening to all of you. To be fair to your uh, viewers, uh, though I might uh, use my political analyst hat, uh, I'm, I'm a congressman. Okay. Let, let me be very fair. Okay, now coming to this issue, so you can look at the same things in different ways. There is this India Alliance whose purpose is to bring back the political discourse onto the right issues and we are all agreed. TMC, Congress, Samajwati Party, everybody. We are on. Second, to put up a credible fight against the BJP mission. Right? That everybody is doing. There will be issues uh, once in one state. Of course, in Punjab and Bengal, any any keen reader of politics would have expected this. Don't make me say why. Okay, that's not for me to discuss. Okay, so people would have expected it. What what do what do you think will happen in Kerala? Will India Alliance fight as a, as a Alliance? Right? No, 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 so no. One second, Mr. Mika, no, the, the problem I'll is tell. this. I, one second, let, let me just explain this to you. In 2004, when the UPA first won, there were a line, I mean, it was a, I think almost 20 parties were there, DMK was there, NCP was there, a whole bunch of other parties were there. So at the state level, there were individual agreements between the Congress and these regional parties, you fight X number, we'll fight Y number, right? The only post-election arrangement that happened was with the left. The left at that time had won about 60-odd seats and they backed the UPA from the outside. This time, this is an alliance. You have crowned it the India Alliance. You have named it India Alliance. In an alliance, if one of the principal parties, and now two because Ahmadmi Party has also said the same thing, if two principal parties are saying, we don't want to have any truck with the Congress because A, we don't think we need to give them space, and B, we believe that if we give them space, we are to lose more than, than to gain more. That is a problem. That did not happen in 2004. In 2004, for whatever it was worth, whether it was with Lalu or with DMK or with other uh, regional parties, NCP, etc., Congress got into an arrangement. It fought X number of seats. Those parties fought Y number of seats. Right now, what is happening is, this is as good as, if at all it came to that situation, this is as good as a post-poll arrangement, not a pre-poll arrangement. Um, Jaka, no two elections are safe. 
okay so it's easy for us to juggle these numbers see extrapolate that's not how politics works that's not how the vote gets simply transferred well, how will you know in the last election say uh, congress party uh, got uh, okay 20% vote uh, almost right so do you think all that 20% will be there or you don't know right it it may it might be increased or it might decrease so we we don't political parties we don't plan on those lines what we plan is on the issues what is facing the country what is resonating with the people of the country today india alliance including tmc agrees that the craving for change is resonating with people and so the diversionary the tactics day, <laughs> so, so at the end of the no day these are no no no, no. I, I, you're partly right these are issues that resonate with people you have to raise those issues but at the <laughs> end of the day if you're fighting as an alliance of 20 parties or 25 parties or whatever it is in the india alliance you have to come to an arrangement an agreement with a majority of these parties that look you fight a certain yeah. number of seats we fight a certain number of seats Precisely. that has fallen apart with two exactly. principal regional players already even before the election even before you go to face the people but let me no, get amitabh yeah. tiwari let, give me give why, why me, don't you simply, look at it no, no, this please, way please, Jack, just a second let, let me seconds. go to let me go to amitabh seconds, tiwari Am, amitabh why don't tiwari. you look at it this way no, no. this is the arrangement amitabh tiwari the issue is that tmc and aap are already saying that look we want to fight on our, on our own whatever the calculation is whether it is arithmetic they feel like they stand a better chance if they fight on their own rather than you know uh, uh, allying with the congress whatever the cold hard logic for that is we'll park that aside but tomorrow the jdu and especially after you know the announcement of karpuri thakur getting bharat ratna uh, samajwadi party again this will have ripple effect in uttar pradesh also i don't think the karpuri thakur decision is going to be restricted just to bihar alone what stops them from saying that look the congress is not present in up and bihar why are we giving congress eight seats or 10 seats or 15 seats or whatever the number that they will eventually arrive at we would rather contest those seats on our own and see at least that will give us the chance to bargain more with the congress if at all such a scenario arises that the congress plus these other regional parties is in a position to form the next government see any relationship is based on sacrifices from both the sides However, as you mentioned in the India block, there is a game of one-upmanship. The regional parties do not want to cede space to Congress, but Congress feels that why should it help the regional parties like TMC win 32 or 34 seats? As you said, who will be winning these 32 or 34 seats if the alliance is formed? It, it will be largely the TMC, and what will the Congress get, get out of it? the tmc does not have a single vote outside of west bengal to give to the congress party yes so so this relationship is one sided it is a short term relationship there is no long term goal of this correct this is only for the parliament election it mm -hmm. is not for the state elections there is no block deal so just because the top leadership of these parties have kissed and made up they cannot expect the lower rung cadre to accept the decision of 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 the top leadership if congress contests upon on only two seats what will the 40 candidates who contested in 2019 do i mean they will have to do something correct but here tmc has taken a risk and it would be it seems to be advantage bjp there because congress has 6% vote share largely comprising of minorities congress led to the defeat of tmc candidates in six seats including uttar malda which is a minority dominated seat congress would have been able to transfer this vote share to the tmc tmc hopes that in a the election becomes bipolar and it is able to dent into the vote bank of cpm and congress party and if the alliance of sorry if the election is to elect a pm then the opposition does not have a pm candidate exactly that's number one Number two, thirty-seven percent people in a Lok Sabha election vote in the name or the face of the prime minister. So opposition does not have a prime ministerial face. The Congress party sees that the regional parties are trying to eat into their vote share, and the regional parties feel that the Congress is trying to eat okay. into their. Okay. No, no. I, I just want to sort of clarify once again that you know the downside for the TMC 
if you were to go by the 2021 assembly elections and then translate that, that to the Lok Sabha, the downside is only two seats. So at best, even if all of them come together, Congress, left, TMC came together, the TMC only stands to lose two seats. So it's a cold, hard logic behind why Mamata Banerjee has decided to go it alone in Bengal. But I want to ask Vivek Silas Actually, this. One more point. No, no. One, just, yeah, okay. Just one sorry. point. One point. See, the downside can be many seats. If the BJP gets 5% more vote share in West Bengal due to this fervor of the Ram Mandir, etc., then the TMC would lose 12 out of those 22 seats. Yeah, yeah. But the point is, where is that 5% coming from? Now, if you were to imagine that that is the anti-TMC vote, right? Obviously, it's an anti-incumbent vote. That if, if you have a third party and a fourth party, in this case, we don't know if Congress and left will fight together, whether ISF will fight with, that, with, with those partners. But if you have another set who are also fighting, there is the possibility that that anti-incumbent vote gets split between the BJP and the Congress left. So that is Mamta Banerjee's calculation, which it may or may not happen. I don't know. But that's what happened in 2019. Yeah. BJP so, won 18 seats. So, so, so the, the, the issue is that Mamta Banerjee has made that cold hard calculation that I'm okay with, you know, the vote voters against me getting split between two parties, even if it's, let's say, 40% to BJP and 10 or 12% to the Congress and left. But I want to go back to the political spokespersons. Vivek Silas, again, it, yes. e even in UP, right, you said seven seats you have given to the uh, RLD. Uh, as far as my understanding is, the two seats of Amethi and Rai Bareilly, Samajwadi Party is willing to give to Congress. But beyond this, beyond 7 plus 2, 9, 71 seats out of 80, what is the cold hard logic for the Samajwadi Party giving more seats to the Congress? Congress, on the other hand, is saying you should go by their best performance, which was in 2009, where they won 21 MPs. Now, are you telling me, Vivek Silas, today on this program, that Samajwadi Party is willing to fight only in 60 seats, the rest of the 21 seats it will give to Congress and 7 seats, of course, to the, uh, to the uh, RLD? Hmm, uh, Mr. Jacob, as far as the Amity and Rai Bareilly is concerned, it's not just in 2019. If we see the five, six uh, elections down the line, the Samajwadi Party has never fought against the um, uh, you know Congress Party. We were uh, courteous enough for Mrs. Gandhi and uh, Mr. Rahul Gandhi and others to we left those seats. We didn't fight at all. Uh, but uh, the question that you have just asked me uh, is the question cannot be discussed on the television channel, not at all. If what uh, the Congress is going to get from the Samajwadi Party or how many seats we are going to give them. But the question is, ki ultimately, we have to uh, stop the Bharti in the party in Uttar Pradesh. Because if we stop the Bharti in the party in Uttar Pradesh, the largest state in the country, the Bharti in the party is not going to come into power. And the con Congress should definitely consider it. Ki why not? And if some okay. the party is the principal, uh, principal uh, uh, opposition party in Uttar Pradesh with a vote share of 37.5% in 2022. So it's, it, Congress has to take a call. What they have to do? No. So to again, you, you know, there, there was. Can I quickly yeah, come in? Yeah, yeah, ma'am. Just give me ten seconds. Wait, wait, wait. When, when, when mm. SP and BSP fought in an alliance in 2019, it was said, "Oh, this is a formidable alliance on paper, arithmetic. You know, they have more than 50 percent vote share." But that's not how it translated on the ground. Ultimately, it was the BJP yeah. that got 50 percent yeah, plus yeah. vote share in, I think, 60 out of the 63 seats that they won. But let me ask Sanju Varma. At least yeah, in the case give me of, just 10 seconds. I'll yeah, just take okay, 10. 10 seconds, quickly. I, I'm, uh, yes, in, 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 in 2019, when Mayavati ji was with the Samajwadi yes. Party, she rose from 0 to 10, due to the help of the Samajwadi Party. And the uh, Bharti and the Party was reduced from uh, 73 to 64. You cannot say that the Bharti and the Party okay. was not tempted. Yeah, Bharti no, no, come on. Party uh, was if, you, if a party wins 64 out of 80, then they have overwhelmingly yeah. won that state. But Sanju Varma, you know, in the case of Punjab, for example, in 2019, Akali Dal and BJP were together and you ended up winning four seats. Today, you are not together. So the Amadmi Party's calculation is the same as what Mamta Banerjee is calculating, that the anti-incumbent vote will get split. You have BJP, you have Akali Dal, you have Congress, therefore it benefits the incumbent. Okay. You know, Zaka, uh, if you look at the other three panelists from the opposition, and this is with no offense to them, the one thing that they all said was we want to defeat the BJP. 
And you know, I believe, and this is just the textbook definition of an alliance. You don't need to be a rocket scientist to uh, uh, be aware of this. It says the basic ethos of an alliance is that you capitalize on each other's strengths and you accommodate each other's weaknesses. Now, what I see unfolding, uh, you know, uh, and you don't even have to be a political analyst, even a layman can see it's, uh, you know, clear as the sky that the entire bunch of 26 or 27 odd parties, they certainly want to capitalize and feed off each other's strengths, but they do not want to accommodate each other's weaknesses. And that is precisely the reason I will just take you back a little back in time. In 2017, after that famous uh, term, hum UP ke ladke hai, hum ek saath ladne aaye hai, hum BJP ko hara denge. Can I please finish? I did not hear you. Hold your horses. After the 2017 election results in Uttar Pradesh, when the Samajwadi party was reduced to a measly 47 seats, what happened? The Samajwadi party and the Congress alliance broke. Then the Congress formed an alliance with the CPM and the ISF, Indian Secular Front, uh, ahead of West Bengal 2021 assembly elections. What happened? After the 2021 Bengal assembly elections, the CPM, the Congress and the ISF went their separate ways. And don't forget one more thing. This is something which not very many people are talking of. Assam is one of the biggest northeastern states. The Congress in 2021 formed an alliance with the AIUDF, Badruddin Ajmal's party, but it is the AIUDF which gained in Assam in 2021 at the expense of the Congress. What happened after that? The AIUDF and Congress alliance in Assam fell apart. So my limited point is this. If you look at the Congress's history, it has never been able to stitch together a cohesive alliance, okay. much less sustain one. And that is precisely what is the Achilles heel of this entire bunch okay. of 26, it, 27 uh, parties I'll, I'll coming give, together. I'll give the final word to Dr. Shantanu saying, even if you look at the UPA years, some of the critical partners of the UPA, including the TMC at one point of time, came into that alliance post facto. They did not come in a pre-poll alliance. They came in a post facto alliance. The SP did, the left of course did in 2004, the entire left front uh, and of course the BSP also post-2009. And these were post-facto electoral arrangements, these were not pre-poll alliances. The issue, sir, is that in 2024 and having seen 10 years of a single party rule and, and the benefits that come with it, why should the people of India again vote back a coalition which does not have the numbers and which then cobbles it together post facto, post the election result. I think that era in the 90s and early 2000s is pretty much over now, era of coalition politics. I would request to lend you yes to my last three sentences. Number one, as the third largest political party of the country, I should, could have been given little more time by you. Number two. You lost your national in party status country, in 2023 have... April. You are a small regional party. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. What, 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 Dr. Sen. Yeah, Dr. Yeah, Sen. Yes, Dr. Sen. Yeah, thank my you. My second, my second thank you, sentence Dr. Sen. is, yeah. my, my second sentence is, people of India have several, has seen, have seen several elections before a royal and they have voted without seeing the projected Prime Minister face for a change. This is going to happen once again in 2024. Okay. The face of Prime Minister is India. And number three, in the country as a whole, BJP is suffering from India phobia and in our state of West Bengal, BJP suffers from Trinomul and Mamta phobia. Okay. We'll see, uh, uh, frankly, whether this is going to Your be a repeat be of 2004 Lala, or Aapka is 2024 Lala, a completely Lala. new generation of politics, a completely <laughs> new chapter of politics. We will know by May of 2024, but I for one wouldn't wager on the fact that the people of India want to go back to how it was in 2004 coalition politics, you know, parties jostling with each other, post-poll arrangements, post-facto arrangements. Let's see, uh, 10 years of one-party rule whether or not that has changed the politics and the polity of India. Thank you very much to all our guests. I'm going to take a quick break here on the program. When we come back, we have a special from Ram.